everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's class. Uh, just to give you a little background, my name is Megan. I am one of the, uh, or I am the printing and product specialist for Craftsmith. Um, we make a lot of the uh, paper and scrapbooking and party supplies for Michaels. Um, I'm gonna wait a little bit for you guys to come on in before we start today's class. Uh, but just so you are all aware, uh, if you need the supply list for today's class, it is uh, up on the website. Um, and most of the supplies I believe can actually be bought online as well as in Michael's stores. Uh, so if you're crafting along with us today, you know, that's totally great. If you just wanna watch today and craft later, that works too. Um, let me see real quick. So uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them into the chat box. Uh, Danelle will be monitoring the chat box. So if you have questions as I'm crafting, she can ask me and I can hopefully answer that for you and provide a little bit of clarity. This class is also going to be recorded uh, and it will be up on the Michaels YouTube within 24 to 48 hours. So at the latest by Thursday, it should be up there. Um, again, any questions, pop it in the chat box and now will let me know. Uh, my name's Megan. We're gonna go ahead and just talk a little bit. So uh, we're making cards today, but Christmas is a little bit different this year. So we're all kind of getting super festive. Uh, so if you need, we have all kinds of products at Michael's. I'm gonna show you some of our paper pads today. You can do all kinds of crafting with them. We're gonna be making cards. You can do everything from making, you know, paper chains and other decor with your kids to decorate your house. Uh, these cute little plaid banners behind me. You can find those in Michael's and our decor boxes over here. You can find those in Michael's as well. And these are great because they are decorative, but they double as storage. So anything you need to get out of the way during the holiday season, great for these. Uh, and one of my favorite products, it's just gonna show off. I love this thing, I want it. It is a cute little holiday planner. Uh, so it has got sections in here for you to record your holiday memories, your holiday goals, your holiday recipes. You can write down your wish list as well as what you're buying for other people. Uh, you can pick this up in Michael's. It is so cute. I love the artwork on this. The designer did a great job. There's even like little Christmas trees inside and Santa to greet you. So if you need something to help keep track of your holidays, I highly recommend this. All right, so today we are focusing on the plaid paper pads, uh, but really you can do whatever you want, whatever paper pad you like. I just really love the plaids. I think it goes well with so many different things. Um, if we can go ahead and go to the overhead camera. So we're gonna be working with photographs today. So you can totally go online and end up getting your cards printed at some place that will do it online, but that's just not quite as personal as making it and customizing it yourself. Um, so the first thing you always wanna do is choose the photographs you want. Now this photograph, I love this photograph. I took this photograph. This is actually my brother and his wife at their wedding. I thought this would make an adorable Christmas card uh, because it's got that cute barn feel. It looks very warm. There's touches of red to it. So it feels Christmassy without being overtly Christmassy. When you choose your photographs that you wanna do, you are gonna to want to choose paper that's going to complement them. So you don't necessarily, this is a very warm photograph. When I choose colors that go with it, I'm not necessarily going to want to put it on say a red paper because that's just gonna warm it up more. I wanna bring something out that's going to uh, make it look vibrant instead of washed out. So you can see when I actually put it on top of this, our red and green paper pad, if towards the red side, it just starts to blend in where towards the green side, it starts to pop. So that's what you wanna look for to start complementing things when you're crafting with your photographs. Because obviously the photographs I use today are not gonna be the photographs that you end up using for your own family cards. So again, just when you're looking for complementary colors, look for something that makes your photograph pop. So we're gonna start by actually making our card. 
We're going to be using today our red and green paper pad for our base. Our accents are going to be made out of our plaid paper pad, which is just a super cool paper pad. There's all kinds of accents in it. We'll go through it a little bit. It's got foil. I love this paper pad. And we're going to use this shimmer pad, which I also adore because it's really subtle, but it's just got a gorgeous like sheen to it each and every color. So you get a little bit more subtlety than uh, using, say, a straight foil, but you still get like a nice bit of bling. So like I said, first thing we're going to do, we're going to choose our base for our Christmas card. Because instead of buying a pre-boxed card, you can just use our paper pads for the whole thing. And I definitely want to go with the green, not a lime green for this guy. I'm thinking more of like a forest green, they're in a barn. So we've got, yeah, might be a little bit, but we're going to go just a little bit darker because you can see that's going to pop. We are, this class is going to be recorded. Um, and it is going to be up on the Michael's website within, or uh, on the YouTube, Michael's YouTube within 24 to 48 hours. I saw someone ask that question. So let's go ahead. I like my cards, my photographs. I printed my photograph at four by six. Um, you can get prints made uh, if you don't have a nice printer at home. Uh, I usually get prints online. Some place like Target, you can get prints for your photos for like 20 cents each. It's really great. Uh, we are going to go ahead, since this is four by six, we're gonna cut this to a five by seven card. So the first thing I need to do is make this seven inches. And then we want, since five plus five is 10, we're gonna make this direction. Now, if you have a, a scoreboard and a bone folder, you can use that. You'll get a nice crisp line. But you can line this up enough just by hand that I'm not afraid of hand folding it. Just go nice and slow, line your edges up. And then just give yourself a nice crisp fold. Okay. So you can already see if I go with greens, that's really gonna make him pop. So we're obviously not done yet. We're going to get a few more accent colors, but what I would actually like to go ahead and do is cut out our dye. So I can use pretty much whatever color I want in this pad. It will pop on here, but I kind of like to make it even more wintry. I think I'm and Christmassy. I think I'm going to stick with red, white, and green as my main colors. And this shimmer paper is so cool. So I'm going to use this shimmer paper to go along with these guys. It's just my white shimmer. And we have got, for this card, I'm gonna be using this die set, which again is available at Michael's. And these tag dies are so great. All of these stamps are sized to fit on the various dies. So you can both cut out your tag and then decorate it with one of these guys. It's really cool to use. So for my scale of my card, uh, I don't necessarily want, sorry, I don't necessarily want this biggest guy because he's about probably two and a half, three inches. That's going to take up a lot of real estate on this card. So we're going to use instead the middle die, which is this size right here. So you can see just when you place it in there, it is going to just fit in there nicely without being the focal. Uh, point. It's going to make my brother and his wife still the focal point. We have for our dye machine, just a cute little spell binder. It's a hand crank. If you've never used a uh, die cutting machine before, it is super easy. Don't be afraid of it. Uh, I'm still super new to using them, but it makes so much, so much easier. So you've got your base plate. I usually just do it with my, uh, the correct side up for my paper, and then put your die on upside down. Put your cutting plate on top, and you're gonna feed it through. There are, yeah, there are similar die cut machines. Um, 
there's several, I believe, at Michael's. Um, I haven't looked a lot at the die cut machines at Michael's, but I know they do have these as well. When you do this, it does get a little bit like you're working your arm muscles sometimes. And don't be freaked out when you're uh, cutting your die machine, especially if you do it the first time if you hear a crunch. As the plate goes through, you might have heard it just now, uh, that just is the die piercing the paper. The shimmer paper pad is six by six, I believe. So. All right, so you can see it literally just cut nice through my, my die. It is perfectly done. It's really clean, it's really easy. And the reason I'm cutting this guy first is because uh, we're gonna stamp him and we need him to dry. This paper uh, is a little bit uh, slick. So when we use ink on top of it, it just takes a few minutes to dry. So just be aware of that if you're doing anything that has a glossy finish. Uh, let's put, <laughs> you can't see my, see my little tag on my white table. So uh, anything that has a glossy finish, is just gonna take a few minutes to dry. So just keep that in mind because we wanna try not to smear anything. So these are great. Our clear stamp set, again, from the same thing that the uh, tag die came from. I'm using the Merry Christmas stamp. And I love these so much because it's this clear block that you put it on, which means I can perfectly see through this and line up my stamp wherever I want it to go. This is some of my favorite kinds of stamps with these clear blocks. So just gonna very gently ink up your stamp. And it's again, it's super cool because you can actually see through the block and tell if your stamp is inked, which is nice. You know, if you've missed any spots. And I'm just gonna try to get this in the center of my tag. And go straight up and down. It usually sticks. Yep, stuck to my stamp. So you just wanna be careful getting that off. Just pop it with a fingernail. It'll pop right off. And then set that aside to dry. Okay, so we have our main card. We have our photograph, which I don't need to cut to size. I'm gonna use this at a, as a full four by six, but we need our plaid. So as I've already discovered, I really like green for this. And I personally might be able to tell from my sweater, I am a fan of Buffalo check. So I know in this paper pad where there are you know, so many lovely plaids, I know there is a green Buffalo check. So we're gonna use the green Buffalo check. Since I am using my photograph as a full four by six, I want to cover this whole background because if I don't, if I only let a little bit, you know, show to try to make a border, this is a really big pattern. I'm gonna lose a lot of detail. So I wanna cover this whole background. If I was using a much finer plaid, um, which I'll show you if we get to our red card today, uh, it, you can, Crop it in a little bit closer and have some layers because you're going to see more detail. But this is a big pattern. It has some, you know, nice little stripes and variations and things to it. I want to show off this pattern. All right, so we need to chop this down to a five by seven. All right, so I have my nice five by seven right here. And we're gonna start layering on my card. I use, or I've been using lately, this Scotch tape runner. Um, there's all kinds of brands of tape runners you can pick up. They're just really great because they're very low mess uh, and your you know, glue and everything is just preloaded into this. Uh, you can use double-sided tape, you can use a uh, tacky glue, you could use Elmer's, whatever adhesive you really like when you're crafting, uh, please feel free, go ahead and use that. I just like this because it's quick and easy. So I hate waiting for things to dry. I'm a little impatient that way. 
And this is easy because I'm just literally going to take my paper pad, the or plaid paper, the uh, back that I did, and I'm going to hit the borders. Sometimes I throw a little bit in the middle just for luck. Get it to really adhere. So you can see I've got it on all my edges. You can kind of see it there. So it's going to be nice and secure when I get it on here. Line it up. And once you're sure you've got this nice and even, just press down. Now, if you do use the glue runner like this, this is, uh, I believe it's not removable. So just be really sure you've got this in the correct position, anything we glue down before you push it down. Because if you try then to peel it up, you're probably going to rip it and then you'll have to start over. And no one wants to do that. We do if we have to, but no one wants to do that. Now, one of my tricks, since obviously we're using a full green card, uh, you're going to have trouble writing inside this. So I went ahead and I took just a sheet of eight and a half by 11 printer paper and I cut it down to a four by six size so that we can have a nice writing surface in here. And you won't have to uh, do some crazy tricks to let your loved ones be able to read what you have for them. So you're just gonna do the same thing, cut your paper down to four by six or whatever size you'd like it to be for your card, glue the back, and then just try to center it in here. If you wanna be super technical about it, uh, you can measure it out and figure out where it is, but I think I can eyeball it close enough to get centered. And there we go. You now have a nice writing surface for the inside of your card. If you wanna stamp in here, you can do that as well and add another Christmas message. But since I stamped that tag with Merry Christmas for the outside, uh, I'm gonna leave the inside for a handwritten message. All right, so you might be able to guess the next step, but we are gonna take this and secure it to the front of our card. So same thing, just like I did with the inside, you're going to hit the back of your photograph with the tape or the glue runner in my case. So again, double stick works just fine. And just put enough on it that you know it's gonna be nice and secure. And since this is the front of my card, I'm gonna take just another moment to really make sure this is centered as much as I can eyeball it. And I think that's pretty good. You can see now why I chose to cover the full background. This is a really big plaid. If I had chose to like maybe only do this about half an inch or a quarter inch bigger than my photograph, it would just look a little odd, but this way you can still tell it's a plaid, you can tell it's a buffalo check, and it just really works together with it. Okay, so my next thing we're gonna use, because again, I wanna keep this really red and green, because red and green is really traditional Christmas colors, and that's kind of what I wanna bring out with this card. We are gonna use our craft tape here. This is a really cool holiday set. Each and every one of these just shimmers, and it's, so cool, I went ahead and I bought this actually to use at home because I love this set so much. So I'm gonna choose my red. It would look cute to do the white as well, but I'm gonna choose my red. And one of my tricks that I do, because I wanna get this really exact, this is a four by six photo. I am going to actually measure my tape on here before I uh, put it on my photo. If I can find the end, that is always the difficult part. There we go. So my random trick that I do. All right, so we're gonna do my six, six end first. You see, I just kind of laid it on the ruler and there's my six, so I know where to cut it. This works best if you do have a metal or a plastic ruler. It just is a little bit more difficult on a wooden ruler. And I got right in there and I cut that. So I know I have an almost perfectly six inch piece of crafting tape. And I'm gonna take it. Right along the top here. This is where I try to be really exact. Um, you know, like I said, I don't really care as much about like the inside of the card, um, you know, being perfectly measured. It's just my personal thing. Uh, but for this, because it's gonna be at the front of the card and everyone's gonna see it. It's gonna you know, be sitting, most people put their Christmas cards out. 
uh, I want to make sure the front is as exact as I can make it. Because our Christmas cards become part of our holiday decor. All right, so measuring six again. Remember, if you have any questions about anything I'm using or anything I'm doing, go ahead and drop it in the chat. And if I don't see it pop up, uh, Danelle will let me know. And then we're going to do four inches for our sides. One thing I really like about making my own cards versus, you know, ordering them and printing them online is just that you can actually do have a little more variety. Um, you know, I if I don't want to make 25 of the same exact card, I don't have to. I can make variations in each one of them. If I have time, I can even occasionally personalize them a little bit for who they're being sent to. You know, whether that just be a, you know, if I was sending this to my mom, it, if I could include a cat in here somehow, she'd love it. Uh, or even like sneak in another photo of my, my nephews. My mom would love it. Because uh, what grandma doesn't want pictures of their grandchildren? All right. So you see how much just adding that little bit of red shimmer has just started to pull the whole thing together. It doesn't look like we've just glued things on top of each other anymore. It looks like a really nice high quality card. And we've still got a couple more steps. So the next thing I'm going to do is take our tag, if I can get it off the table, take our tag and we're going to go ahead and place this. I like it down in the corner. Um, we're gonna put it down in the corner because it's just gonna help our eye travel. She's in white. So if I put this over here, it's also white. It's gonna keep our eye moving across the card. That's one of the things you can keep in mind, again, when you're choosing colors for things is uh, just how to balance it. If you've got, you know, maybe a photograph that has something, you know, more red over here, maybe you can do a red tag down here um, just to keep everything flowing, so. Okay, so like I said, I know I want that to go there. We're going to go ahead and flip it over and do the same thing. Just put some nice glue on the back, tape, whatever adhesive you're using. You don't have to use quite as much as I did, but I really want to make sure this sticks if it goes in the mail. And we're going to take this and just pop it right down in the corner. And as long as you know it's dry, go ahead and smash it down. If it is not dry, avoid the stamped area and push it down because the last thing you wanna do is get your car three, card three quarters of the way done and then smear your work. That would just be disheartening. So you can see if I wanted to, I could stop here, but I wanna make it just a little bit more wintry. Um, I mean, you know, it doesn't fully look like he had a summer wedding here, but he totally did. So uh, I wanna make it, just look a little more wintry. I have this cool punch. Uh, it's just a little snowflake punch that I think would be really fun to add. Uh, this is a recollections punch and I'm sure they have something very similar at Michael's still. And I'm gonna take our white sheet again and I'm gonna punch probably about three snowflakes. It's best to do things uh, in an odd number. Um, if you do things like say I did two snowflakes, if I didn't perfectly line them up symmetrically, it would look like they were not purposely uh, lined up. It would look like a mistake. But if I do three, I can kind of place them around the card and it just makes your eye dance around and it looks really good. Uh, it keeps your eye moving. So I'm gonna play with where I want these. I'm thinking I probably want maybe something up there. And then maybe it might look cute to just throw that guy over there. Or do I want to? 
think something like that will be cute. All right. So admittedly, these guys would be a little bit easier with glue, but I've got the glue runners, so I'm just going to use that and hit the back. If you have glue, you can just put a tiny, tiny little dot of glue in the very center of the snowflake and oops, trying to get it over so you can see it. And that would be a heck of a lot easier because I just partially glued my table. But it's what I have. And like I said, I hate to wait for things to dry. So, and the one thing to caution you if you use the white shimmer, the back is flat white. So just really take a look, especially in your tiny little snowflakes and make sure the shimmer side is the one that will be your correct side. Because it's super easy to tell on the tag, but once you get to the little snowflakes, it gets harder to tell just because there's less surface area. And you don't want to glue it down the wrong way and then realize you, you know, made a mistake. So that is my shimmer side. We're gonna take that snowflake and pop it right there. So this is one finished Christmas card we're gonna to do today. We definitely have time to do the next one. Uh, this one is very traditional plaid. We've used red, we've used green, we've used white, it's snowy. Uh, so if you're a very traditional person, you can totally use the plaid paper pad and our paper pads to get a look like this. Uh, but I also wanted to just take a minute to show you a slightly more untraditional plaid, let's say. So, I have got another photo because again, like I mentioned, you're making your own cards. You can use multiple things. I have got this adorable photo of my nephews and my brother and my mom and I at a, this was a Christmas exhibit, I believe last year in a park, but it works for this year because there's less things out right now. I'm going to use this. I don't want to use this as four by six because if you'll notice, there's just a lot of empty space in here. So for a card, if I did it the same way I did this one, it's just not going to pull the same visual interest that this one does because they fill more of the area. So we're going to cut this down. I think I want to go ahead, I'm going to make a five by seven card again, but we're going to go ahead and cut this to probably four by four. So my first cut, I'm just going to kind of eyeball where to put it. So I really just want, you know, you guys to feel confident that no matter what photo you choose of your family, you can make it work for a card. So I believe this is four inches, but we're going to check it. Yep, that is four by four. Okay. And again, we're doing something a little untraditional here. So I'm just going to show you my thought process for how I picked out colors for this card because you probably saw it on the class photo, but I don't know how well you saw it. So this again, I'm putting it on the front of my paper pad. This photo is very blue and green. We're in Southern California. There's palm trees in the background. If I put this on a green background, what pops is this red, uh, red light bulb, not the kiddos. I would like the family to pop more. So I'm gonna go and pick out a red background. And our nice traditional Christmas red would be something deep like this. This is a great paper pad again that I've got for you guys. There's so many shades of red and green. So if you're crafting for Christmas, this is a great one to get. I can use that one. It's coming off a little more pink on camera than it actually is, but I swear to you, it is a nice red. Or I could use that one. I think I'm gonna use this one. This one's a little bit more, uh, it matches the tone in matte. So that's why I like this guy. Okay, and we're going to cut this down to a five by seven. So again, to turn a 12 by 12 sheet into a five by seven card, you just want to pick a side, cut it at seven inches. And then because five plus five is 10, 10 inches the other way. And just line it up. Crease it nice and good. This would be handy to have a bone, bone folder because I wouldn't have to use quite as much elbow grease to get yourself a nice, a nice crease. 
increase. Hey, Megan, we have a quick question. What kind of paper did you print the photographs on? I actually did it just on a eight and a half by 11 cardstock. Um, so it was just, it's a little bit slick, but it's not glossy. So it's just a higher quality cardstock paper. But like I said, if you want to, you can uh, find plenty of places to get super cheap photo prints online. Uh, I usually do that. I just couldn't find any place that would get them to me quickly this year. So, cause I didn't think about it until a day or two ago, but your printer, if you've got a good printer, it does great now. Um, this would also be just such a cute thing to do if you have a, one of those little Polaroid cameras, you could attach, you know, the Polaroid photo, still follow through the whole thing. They're not Polaroids, but the instant cameras. All right, so we also need a die cut for this guy. So I'm gonna make this more in traditional. We're gonna use red, but we're gonna use instead of red and green, we're gonna use red and blues because there's so many great blue tones in this photograph and I can still use our products, the ones that I showed you guys earlier to make this Christmassy. It will just be a little bit more in traditional. So we are gonna pull back out our die cut machine. And the die cut I'm gonna use this time is from our Christmas tree die cut. And this is so great, there's three sizes. So if you were making a smaller card, you could use one of the smaller trees, but I wanna use the biggest tree because again, we're making a five by seven card. That is some real estate we gotta cover. So I've got my big tree over here, if it will pick up. A nice big tree, you can see how huge that is. I mean, compared to my hand, that's some good real estate. And we're gonna get our shimmer pad again. Because like I said, we're gonna use red and blue and there's a really cool icy blue shimmer color in here. That one is just a really fun pale blue. I would say it's an Elsa blue. All right. So again, if you've never used a die cut, don't be afraid. You're just gonna put your paper down. There's two sides to your die. There's one with like a ridge and then there's a flat side. If you're putting your paper down first, then you're going to place your the flat side up and the ridge side towards your paper. Take your other plate. You can see my plates here have seen lots of love. Just put it through. All three paper pads I'm using today, they are super useful. Um, pretty much all of your holiday crafting, if you are either a plaid person or if you are very traditional, like you love the red and green holiday season, uh, these are great pads for that. Um, I tend to do a little bit of both, which is why I'm making two cards today, one that's a little bit more untraditional and one that's very heavy Christmas. All right, got that through. Didn't hear the crunch that time, but I know it's still cut. <laughs> See, we've got our blue tree. Okay, so again, this is a slip of paper. I wanna stamp a message on here. We are gonna go ahead and do that first so that it has an opportunity to dry. If you're someone who is super into stamping, you can also obviously use a pigment ink and then emboss this and then you don't have to worry about it smearing. But I have not done that in years. So I'm just going to give it dry time. I actually kind of like how this just looks. It's just kind of very plain and simple, but it stands out on top of that with just the black ink. You could use a colored ink. I just really like how the black looks. It gives you a contrast without overpowering anything. All right, so just like last time, I'm actually gonna start with my printer paper that I cut down and we're gonna pop that in there. Before we forget, you could write on this, it'll show up, but I mean, I just think it looks nicer if we've got our little surface in here to write on. It also makes it look a little more expensive. So that's a bonus too. My favorite thing when I've handmade cards for people before is they always love to ask me where I bought them. And I'm like, no, no, we didn't buy them. I handmade them. 
All right. So you can see what it's starting to take shape. Since this is a square photo and we're putting it on a rectangle card, I don't want to set it right in the middle because then it's going to be super easy to tell if I've accidentally, you know, just left it a little bit uncentered. Like you can tell that's not quite centered. So it's going to be look better if I deliberately move it to one side and we're going to fill the other side. All right, we are going to find a plaid that goes with our color scheme because I know it exists in here. There's so many plaids in here. It's a plaid for every mood. See, this one's not bad. It is a red and blue plaid. There's a little bit of green in it, but it's just it doesn't seem as vibrant as I would want to go with this photograph. Again, we're in Southern California. It doesn't even snow here. Our traditional, our, our Christmases are a little bit different. I've been at the beach on Christmas day before. So this is the one. It's vibrant, it's red, it's blue. You can already see when I put my photo on here, it starts to just they complement each other. This looks brighter and my photograph looks brighter. So that is a good way to know that they will pair well. It's always satisfying to rip the pages out of the paper pad and hear that nice clean rip. So we are gonna cut this down. This is four by four. So I don't want it to cover this whole pad or this whole card. I want to have some of this nice vibrant red showing through. So I'm gonna do what I talked about last time and I'm just gonna make a border for this. Now, keep in mind, I don't have tons of room to work with because this is a four by four and this is five inches tall. But if I make a square to go behind this, that's about half an inch bigger in all directions, I'll get a nice border. So that's what we're gonna do. If we're gonna cut a square out of this, that's four and a half by four and a half. Paper cutters sitting on something. There we go. All right, so you're going to line this up with the four and a half on your paper cutter. You can, of course, cut this by hand if you want to. It's just so much easier if you have some kind of paper cutter to get your nice straight lines and know that immediately you're cutting it to the correct size. All right. So I've got my square here. This is four and a half by four and a half. This is four by four. You can see when I pop those on top, we're still gonna see some of that plaid. I'll show you guys a closer view, but first I wanna get this attached because otherwise it's just gonna flail around on me. So grab your glue, make sure this is nice and secured because again, in all likelihood, you're sending these through the mail to all our family members that we haven't been able to see each other or enough this year. All right, and I'm gonna try to eyeball this as exactly as I can, just because we want it to look like it's bordering or matting the photograph. So you can see my cute little photo of my nephews here. It's all red and blue. This is really starting to pop and it's just a little bit of plaid. And even though plaid tends to be quite traditional and this is a more contemporary photograph, they work together because I found color tones that work together. So now we're gonna take it and we're gonna secure it on my card right here. We're leaving our nice big side over here for our Christmas tree that we die cut and stamped. So same process as before. When, if you do use a glue runner, good trick is try not to do it on top of you know, your, your other piece because sometimes you get a little into it, you miss an edge and you're gonna end up putting glue on here that you maybe don't necessarily want. So either put some kind of table cover down that you can glue on top of and it doesn't matter if you go beyond your borders or if it's like me, this table I can clean later, it's totally fine. I can just go right on top of here. All right, so we're gonna take this and we're setting it to the, uh, the right here. You could put it on the left. I just want it on the right because we've got this nice tall piece over here. And so if I put it on the right, that means your eye is gonna keep traveling that way. 
So we're using again balance to keep your eye going in the direction that we want and not getting stuck anywhere on the card. So the biggest thing with this is we are sticking it to the right. I want to be able to see some red on all three of these sides. So I'm just going to try to get as close as I can to making it equal. Oh, nope, that's going to be easier if I do this because then I can see. I want to make it equal so it doesn't look like I've, you know, completely shoved it too far in one direction. So I want it to be the same distance here, here, and here if I can, or at least as close as I can make it. I think that's fairly close. So we're gonna go ahead and stick it down. I really do like sending photo cards um, because it's a cute little touch. This year we haven't seen each other as much, so it's cute to send a photo through the mail. But I have found too that when I send photo cards, people keep them. Um, because you're not just sending a greeting card, it's a family photo. Uh, so it's really nice to just get that in the mail. So we are going to take our die cut tree. We're gonna put it in this nice big space we made. So again, just so you can see, I've got pretty much equal distance on all of these sides. I've got my nice big section here, which we are gonna take up with our Christmas tree. Okay. That one is still a little wet. Through the magic of TV, I made some things in advance in case things were wet. All right, so I've got that just nice and glued on the back. This is pretty tall. So you wanna make sure when you're placing this that you're fully within the edges of your card. Because if you miss and you think you're close, you're gonna end up you know, with the little point of the tree popping off the top. You can buy just standard five by seven envelopes. They sell them at a, I don't know if they have them at Michael's, they probably do, um, but I know they sell five by seven envelopes at office supply stores and pretty much anywhere you can buy paper products. And that's actually what I have downstairs is uh, just a box of five by seven envelopes. Yeah. All right, so we have got our Christmas tree stuck there. And again, I could stop here if I wanted to, but I wanna add just a little more flair because I don't particularly like this empty corner up here. Because again, we want people's eyes to travel evenly over the card. We don't want them to get stuck in one space. And you know, we'll just make it a little bit more Christmassy without, keep, without making it super traditional. So one more time, I'm gonna use my lovely scrap of white shimmer paper and my snowflake punch, because even though it doesn't snow in Southern California, we still like to pretend. I'm gonna do three again, because again, we want an uneven number so that it will help the eye dance. All right, oops, I thought I knocked a snowflake off. I think this one is backwards. All right, I know it's hard to see, but I've got three little snowflakes right here. And I'm gonna place them. I know I definitely need something up there. It's gonna be kind of a similar configuration to what I did with this guy, which is just coincidence. But I mean, putting these here did help your eye go down here, so. I think I can do that and that'll actually be pretty cute. So let's do it. It doesn't super, oh, I guess it does look closer on camera. If I wanted to, if you wanted to, you could put like a cute little decoration on the tree. It will show, but I just wanted to keep it a little more simple so that these guys are going to pop. All right, so glue the back of your snowflake once you know where you want it to go. Pop it on. You can also, since you're making these yourself, if you wanted to make an irregular size, you could. Like if you wanted to make a six by six card, you could do that. It just gets harder to find envelopes uh, that will fit things unless you wanna make them yourself. Um, and I think once it starts to get to be irregular sizes, you have to pay more in postage. But uh, 
I know that rectangles are just the regular stamp and five by seven is a standard size. So you don't have to pay extra postage for that. So you can see now I have got my, everything affixed on this card that I want. I've got my photograph here. Our plaid is really just a nice, cool little accent here that helps pull out all the colors. Um, and our little pine tree. I just, I like the comic of having the pine tree here with palm trees in the background. That's just me and our inside. So these are our two cards today. Our very traditional card, and this one's got more sparkle because of our, uh, our crafting tape, and then our slightly untraditional. So do you guys have any questions about anything I've done today? You can go ahead to the front facing. <laughs> so if you guys do uh, end up making any cards with our paper pads, I for one would love to see it. Um, and I know everyone here would, all the designers love to see when you use their, their products uh, and how creative you get with them. So if you do make something today, please, if you can, tag Craftsmith. We are Craftsmith Co, I believe, on Instagram. Uh, and Michael's as well, because everyone loves to see how creative you are. So if you have any questions, you can ask them now. Of course, always, we are on social media as well. You can ask us questions there. We are on Facebook and Instagram at Craftsmith Co. And if there are no more questions, I will see y'all later. Happy crafting. <laughs>